Hello and welcome to Rewind Reviews. This week we are on one of Chris's choices. Oh, there's a podcast. Well, sorry, I should say it's a podcast where we review old stuff from our childhood, usually movies. Uh, we've got a short film this week. Um, an interesting choice, Chris, um, from yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. I was, I mean, well, I mean, I was surprised to hear this was from your childhood because Michael Fassbender looks his current age. And I was also surprised you considered this a Christmas because look, it's it's got a lot of like snowman and snow stuff in it, but it's quite violent. And I mean, it's I'd say it's more of a horror film. You watch this as a kid? I I mean, the problem is yeah. the problem, Dan, yeah. <laughs> is that me claiming to have watched the remake of RoboCop yeah. is the most believable that that gag's ever gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't make too much bones about it. My tone gave away what I was doing, I think. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I was trying true. to convince you. I thought it was just a funny thing to do. <laughs> um, yeah, because if, if you go on Netflix and type in The Snowman, of course, there is the Michael Fassbender movie from like, 2017 called The Snowman, which is about a serial killer. Um, oh, is it? I've never heard of that movie. Yeah, it's like a serial killer who has a snowman theme, leaves, leaves snowmen around, or his bodies are hidden inside snowmen and stuff. It's a whole... It's a whole thing. It's a whole um, thing. It's a whole I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know thing. if it's any good. I suspect it probably isn't. But it's. But on Netflix, its tags are gruesome, would be, psychological, would be my guess. and slow burn. Slow burn. I didn't even realise that slow burn's a category on Netflix. Yeah, apparently it is. Oh, I actually just clicked on it. I didn't mean to start the movie. There you go. Netflix now thinks I've watched two seconds of The Snowman, Michael Fassbender's <laughs> failed horror film from like 2017. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I just noticed it when I was searching for it earlier. It's, it's funny because doing research for this, the amount of times that movie has cropped up when I've been looking for images or stuff towards the actual film watching, which is, of course, the, the, the much more kid-friendly The Snowman animation, British animation from yeah. 1982, I want to say. Um, which is based on a, ki- on, a, on, a on a kids book um, of the same of the same name. Um, a bit of a British institution, I would argue. Um, yeah, I would definitely. They argue very that. they very boldly went and made a sequel to it a couple of years back, like 2013, 2014, uh, The Snowman and the Snow Dog, which I don't remember. Which I think we re- which I feel like we reviewed on here. Uh, on well, nothing but static. Yeah, we might have done. I I, I don't recall. If I even saw it, um, I don't. I, if Maybe I did, I gave if some I comments did, on it then. If I did, I don't remember it. <laughs> but yeah. I remember being very skeptical. Like, you, it's a classic. You can't really sequelize a classic. But let's let's talk about it. So, like, my my connection to this is pretty thin, really. Um, I I saw it a couple times as a kid. I liked it. I thought it was charming. I liked the animation style. But um, that was about it for me. It wasn't like a big, you know, it wasn't something I watched every year. It was something I came across every couple of years. Is, is a better way to describe it. Um, and I was fine with that. Uh, that was, I was, it, it filled a nice little Christmassy hole for me. Never ever became like a tradition, but I know, um, Nadia feels much more strongly about it than I do in that sense. It's a, to her, it's, you know, it's, you watch it every year sort of thing. So, mm. yeah, you know, did she watch it with you? She did. Yeah. yeah. She woke up early to watch it with me this morning, which yeah. I thought was, which was adorable because she it, really was tired. For me, for me, it was like me and my sister would basically every Christmas at some point go, shall we watch The Snowman? And I think the thing that's interesting about it mm-hmm. is from a from a VHS point of view, Dan, mm. it was a very elusive category. Now, I don't know if you had a similar elusive category in your household or if you had a uh, or, you know, if you experienced this. But in our household, it was the only recorded from the TV VHS that sat with my mum and dad's actual proper store brought VHSs. That's interesting. So the entire, you know, those those entire shelves would in that cupboard were mm. just store brought videos, you know, actual proper bona fide videos and then, you know, home movies, you know. And then in amongst that a, you know, a paper recorded from the TV cleanly labeled the snowman and like in my head that that video tape always existed may i think mum and dad may have even recorded it before we were born like because obviously um, my sister's 86 i was um 89 if it came out in 82 it's entirely possible that they recorded it back in 82 i don't know 
but every year they never actually purchased it on VHS. Um, mm. I I got it for my sister on DVD uh, one Christmas as a present alongside the Snowman and the Snow Dog. Uh, she was less she she couldn't really see she didn't get particularly emotive about it. She was like, oh, cheers, it's a random gift. I'm like, but we watched it every year. She's like, I know, I get it. Just you know, I think she would have preferred <laughs> more <laughs> a gift she would watch more than you know <laughs> once every year, maybe as an adult. Fair. Um, but maybe when she has maybe when she has children, um, that would be more. Uh, a, a, a better, a better I gift. think uh, I I think at one point I had the I, I still own a copy of this, but it came in a double set with the Father Christmas one. Yes, yeah, yeah. you know the uh, it, with the same sort of with, well, not the same, a similar animation style that came out a few similar years. Similar animation later. style, a reference, a bit of a universe. There's a reference if memory serves. Isn't there a scene in Father Christmas where they interrupt the dancing party from the snowman? Maybe yes, maybe. I know that there's an, a, an alternate intro to the Snowman where Father Christmas is, is the intro, it introducts it, and he says, "Oh, I remember that Christmas, and I went and saw that boy and gave him a scarf, and then he watches the Snowman on TV." It's really weird. Which and what's weird is all these. And I assume it will come up later in the trip. We briefly touched upon this in the last episode of Rewind Reviews, but. What makes me laugh is because it's a because I watched a version that my mum and dad had recorded. I didn't see any of these introductions. Like it was just. Whereas some people only know it with the Bowie introduction, um, or for me, the original just... introduction, which was the writer of the um, of the of the, the children's story um, narrating over real life shots of fields, which turned to the animated shots. Ah, that sounds familiar, actually. Yeah, so that's that's the original intro that came on the TV broadcast version that Channel 4 broadcast in 1982. Um, that was then replaced with David Bowie, uh, I want to say in the 90s, when it went to America because they were convinced that it needed a real star. Yeah, there you go. The, when it first aired on the PBS stations in the United States, uh, a new introduction was filmed with David Bowie um, on the grounds that the animation needed a star. Was the suggestion of because I have seen that introduction? Was the suggestion that Bowie was the little boy? Yeah. So the yeah. joke I made to Nadia yeah. this morning when it finished was, and that boy became David Bowie. <laughs> yeah. And we very much need to talk about the ending because, oh, yes. in a way, yeah. this is the first time that I felt a real. This is the most emotionally connected to a film we've done. And I've avoided, like, the, the, the two big ones I can think of. Like, if you were... And I'd, if you were to name... If you were to say, you know, very quickly, name the two name two films you are strongly emotionally connected. I know what those choices are for me. I'm pretty sure you could guess them, Dan. What are the two films? Ah. Uh, You're such a bad friend. Ah. Uh, <laughs> You, I would argue you calling me out as a bad friend when you put me on the spot like that makes you a bad friend. But let me have a th- <laughs> let me have a think. Um, so when you say emotionally, you mean like they take you back to a place you were, or the content of the film? Oh, uh, they. It's about the connection to where I was childhood. Right, right, right. So back to the future, probably. To yeah, back to the future is one of them. Um. Oh. I'll give it to you, but you kick yourself. Good Burger's the other one. Right, yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. So, so so, I've avoided that. I've literally avoided those films because part of me doesn't want to, um, doesn't want to go Analyze into that them. well. And I didn't think I'd be feeling this way about this. I was like, ah, it's 25 minutes. It's a short film. What is there going to be to critique and criticize? Oh, yeah. And I feel disgusting for it, but there's some elements of it. I'm like, oh, shit. It's a little bit long. <laughs> like... The ending is insane. It's so sudden. It's unbelievable. It's very dark. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but it, but dark's not. I remember it as this like emotional lesson and core. But it literally it got to the point where I like got the timer up and I was like, shit. There's a minute to go and he's not melted yet. Oh, Surely he not, doesn't. Let, just... We haven't even explained the premise. Yeah. So yeah, let's. Sorry. Yeah, you are, you are jumping. I would argue you are jumping ahead. But yeah, I get what you're well, saying. Like you didn't see like the ending is out of nowhere. But that's I think part of its impact. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, so for those who don't know the snowman, and and and, and I would encourage you, although Chris has already spoiled the ending, but I would encourage you to 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 go watch this if you can. It's only 25 minutes. It's yeah. probably on YouTube. I've not looked, but I, I'll bet it is. Um, uh, it's it's it is a real classic, and it is a wonderfully 
brilliant piece of animation. Like, and the animation itself, we'll talk about a bit more detail later, is stunning. Stunning. They've really, they've created, they've, honestly, they've taken a kid's picture book and brought it to life. And the way the textures move and shift because of the way the animation style, it's its something I've never, to this day, I've never seen anything that looks like this. No one's ever recreated this right. And that doesn't, and that's this, that goes for the, 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 the Father Christmas one and the sequel. <laughs> Nothing looks like this movie. It's, it's a really is just an incredible piece of television in, in that perspective. It's beautiful. Every element of it's beautiful, absolutely. And um, but the basic story is a young boy um, builds a snowman. He's very excited about having built a snowman. He stares it out of his window, and at midnight it comes to life. And there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of mischief in the house. Um, the, the, you know, he's walking around with the snowman. His parents are sleeping, and they get up to some shenanigans. Some very funny scenes happen there. And then the the most iconic scene is to the uh, to the uh, walking in the air song, um, which you've probably all heard, probably set to an advert of some sort. Um, they uh, the the snowman it turns out has magic powers and can fly and he brings the boy with him and he they keep flying and flying and then eventually after all these again it just brilliant incredible visuals which just keep you so engaged as this goes on um, I didn't find it very long at all actually I, th- I thought it was short it felt short to me but that's uh, you know um, I don't know uh, I just I was so blown away by the visuals to be honest with you that was my overarching thought coming out of it was how good it looks but um, they arrive at the North Pole from Brighton. Right into the North Pole, do that in a night. Don't worry about it. On a snowman, it's fine. Um, and he uh, uh, and they go to this. They go to this place where there's other snowmen have all gathered, and there's like a snowman party. And then Father Christmas briefly shows up, and it's very sweet. And then uh, the ending, which we'll get to separately, I think, at, towards the end. So you don't have to, we're not spoil it for anyone. But all the Chris has sort of already given it away. But um, well, also I'd argue. It's called the snowman. You know where that's going. You could guess. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely guess, but you might not know because because the tone of it doesn't. I think it takes you by surprise because the tone of this it doesn't feel like it's going to go that way. Even though that's a very logical place to take a story about a snowman, it's such a light, fun, breezy thing until that point. Yeah, that yeah. that really hits you is like, oh my god, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> Um, yeah. so, so this, uh, it does really come out. They don't set it up. They, there's no like teasing of him being, you know, nearly there. Like it just goes straight to, uh, and he's gone and the boy is devastated. And it's like, wow, that is, life is fickle. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really something. Um, but I mean, I, uh, let, we should talk about the, the, the front half first. I mean, I, I, I tell you, I, him making it first of all is adorable like the the just him making the thing and making the choices about what he's shaped like and what he looks like and um and and uh, the care he puts into designing him almost although ironically all the snowmen later look exactly like him but in different hats and stuff so lots of kids seem to have created identical snowmen which i think is weird i think they should have all looked a bit different because some make them more like human with legs and arms, some make them more like blobs. It would have been nice to see a selection of snowmen, but hey, maybe that's just me being picky. Um, in fact, no, that is me being picky. <laughs> um, but then, I mean, from the moment the magic happens and it's midnight and he comes alive, I mean, the whole thing is just so charming. Do you, do you not think? I mean, was that not your, your experience where you watched yeah. it? Yeah. Like, Oh god, yeah. Like my my the reason I kind of jumped to these slightly critical things were um, as kind of a how horrible this process can be uh, when we're talking about stuff that you know. That's why we've got so defensive in the past. I got maybe maybe a bit defensive about Mouse Hunt, and you, I think, definitely got a bit defensive about Short Circuit sure. in certain areas. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, because and that's I still a film so... I have a very serious affection for, even though I acknowledge its flaws. Yeah, so I that's the reason I mentioned those right up the top. But fundamentally, it's a heartwarming, uh, beautifully <laughs> animated, uh, joyous film to watch. And because they... It does feel quite long, but because they go from location to location to location fairly quickly, it doesn't particularly feel that. You're just kind of swept away on this, quite frankly, magical journey. And it is, it's a silent film, it's worth knowing. There's no, di- there's no dialogue, to clarify. Yes. Because we, yeah. we never said that. Yeah. Um, sorry, and I... And I think what's fascinating is it works without the modern tropes. And I don't even mean the animation style... I mean the modern tropes of if this if this idea was being made now, then that kid 
who builds the snowman mm. would be a lonely, sad child who doesn't have any friends that makes himself who makes himself a friend makes himself a friend and at first he'd be a bit nervous around the snowman and then the snowman would would convince him to come along and he'd have fun and he'd have a great time and then the snowman would la- would melt and that kid would realize that he should be more open to adventures with people and that snowman would have given him the ability to make friends that's what the story would be in a modern context and it doesn't have any of that, and I don't think it necessarily suffers because it doesn't. You're still swept away, and you still feel affection for the kid and the snowman. I agree, but equally, I would. I think that's also what you described as also a really great short film that I would absolutely watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah, because because what you've done there is essentially give that ending more context. It's the thing you were sort of in your criticism. I think poking at not poking at that sounds more snipey than it than I meant it. Uh, but what you were observing when you were tugging on that thread of the ending uh, and the suddenness of the ending was the lack of there being character pathos attached to it, other than the shock value of the ending. Um, yeah. And what you've described is a is is a film where you maybe slightly more. Mm, telegraph what where it's going because people will f- follow the story thread to its natural conclusion in their heads because it's not just a fun jape anymore it's about a kid who's lonely you know that it's going to become the kid ends up being like you know lonely but learning from the experience you know that's that's a very logical way to take that story so you might if doing that version of it telegraphs the ending but 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 um i do think that makes the ending maybe more powerful less surprising but maybe more powerful because you're a bit more invested in the character of the kid yeah. But yeah, I think that's fair. That's because in a modern context, Chris, it have had dialogue. Um, you can't do the plot you've described without dialogue. I don't think. Very true. Very true. Because we actually we talked can't... about this recently, didn't we? Because we talked about the film, the the, the show C, and we talked about yeah on uh, on our, on our on other pod, nothing but static. Yeah, on our, on our TV podcast, nothing but static. You can check that episode out. That episode is, is, is in the archive. You just head to Spotify or iTunes or wherever you get this from. And have a look, um, and, and find the from the nothing but static episode from, I think late mm, late November. Yeah, late November. Um, and, uh, and and we talked about you know making use of your premise, you know, and if if you're a silent mm-hmm. film, having a, a story that really fits into that, and if you if you're not using dialogue that, and if you've got characters that can't see, then you need to make use of that. In the example of C. Um, and I think this makes brilliant use of its of its lack of dialogue. And if this was done in the modern day, they would absolutely give it dialogue for sure. Um, does the snowman, and the snow dog, have a, a dialogue? I bet it does. Well, the snowman. Does the snowman and the snow dog? Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's a shame. Yes, um, because I think, I think it's so. really what's really powerful. I might about be this wrong. I can't is, really remember it. it uh, yeah, exactly. Um, um, I do think that the, the, the dialogueless nature of this, with the exception of if you watch one of the intros, which all have dialogue, to my understanding, of some description, um, the actual film stands on its own as a unique sort of twenty-five minute piece of thingy without any words spoken, and it tells a really, really good story. I think, and it can't be underestimated, especially considering it came out in nineteen eighty-two. Just how good the animation is. No, I, I will. I honestly, I could talk. I think I could talk and prose that for about an hour. Seriously, even if you just go online and look but, at the the walking in the air sequence, you know, this the most famous sequence from it. Just look at that for a minute, and just look at how beautifully animated that is, and when they reach the northern lights yeah. and how that's done. I don't even know how they achieved that and, effect. It's it's incredible, and animated in a way that absolutely holds up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because it's got a classic charm to it. Because so basically, it looks like what they've done, and I could be wrong, but they've recreated the. Te- very textured images from the book because it's, it's a picture book it's it's not a story but it's, i don't think there's words on it i think it's just a picture book that tells the story um and um the guy who wrote and i guess drew it um was actually the original narrator for the very first intro which is just him describing him remembering that remembering old christmases and the one where he had the snowman and and then and then it cuts to it um but he, he you know it sounds like the animators I'll be honest with you, Chris. Went to a lot of fucking trouble to recreate the 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 style of imagery he had in his in his book, 
in a moving form, which absolutely should not be translated to a moving form. You you would just make it cleaner, yeah. wouldn't you? You'd make solid background colours. That sketched yeah. in look they keep. And the way that morphs as the things animate, because every time they're having to re-sketch it in, which means the lines are moving, creates this very ob- strangely textured thing that even still objects feel like they're in motion. It's 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 really unique. I've never seen anything like it, but they did that out of, presumably, respect for the original artwork and trying to honour that style. But let me tell you something, Chris, they made themselves a lot more fucking work by doing it that way, because that yeah. must have taken so much longer to do. And that's what's blew my mind. I said this to Nadia after we watched it this morning. Back in the 80s, when no one gave a shit about content for kids, they went, kids are idiots, they'll fucking watch anything. That's why Spider-Man didn't have threads all up his costume. You know, just make it cheap and yeah. shitty. It won't matter. No one will notice. You know, it, it, cut corners whatever you can. Dumb content for dumb kids. And for them to, in the 80s, to have gone to all this trouble to make this yeah. look like it does. I mean... But, and also, um, the... Yeah, I think the time that must have taken. Mm. Like, what was I had a much better point than that. <laughs> but I can't now remember. Sorry, I went I went on too long. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. No, it's fine. No, it's not your fault. Um but the the time it must have taken to do that. They did that in 1982. It's phenomenal. Oh, that's what I was going to say. It also mm. whilst it would have taken more time and effort and all of that stuff as you've just said. Yes. What it has done though is it would have felt classic even at the time it aired which means that now you amplify that even more so so um they there's a quote about the guy the people that wrote dad's army which is an old british sitcom set in the past Mm. um said that if you want to make sure that something never feels outdated set it in the past and make it outdated when it airs like and it's just a it's just a beautiful notion, and I think that served this film incredibly well because the reason it's a classic is because you're not going oh yeah, but the effects and oh god because it was it was that to begin with. Yeah, but I mean they were so stylized that they act, they sort of act, I don't think they intentionally made it timeless. I think they accidentally made it timeless. They just wanted to make it yeah, good. Yeah. But yeah, the inadvertent effect of making it so unique has accidentally made yeah. it timeless. And I don't Absolutely. think that's and I don't think that's by design. I think that's coincidence, but I think it's worked out beautifully for them. There's no way they knew they were making a classic, but they did. And it was that extra attention to detail and that extra desire to make it match the artwork from the original story picture book like yeah like that's what's that's what's that's what's done it and i mean this is it's not a coincidence this was nominated for an oscar yeah it was nominated for best short film and it was also um best short film animated and it was also um, it won best children's program at the baftas and it was nominated for best graphics at the baftas uh, which i guess is an old thing for just best visuals um yeah best visual effects can we talk a bit about the music well, I was going to say, what's your favorite? What's your favorite scene? Because it's got to be the flight over Brighton, hasn't it? Yeah, it, ha- it has to be. I mean, I do love, I love him, like when they first bring him into the house. The various japes that happen inside the house make me laugh every time. So there's a bit where he's swapping his nose for different fruit, and the one thing I never expected to see was when he turns around, he's got a pineapple in his face. That makes me chuckle every time i don't even when i'm expecting it that makes me chuckle i think that's very charming and very silly but very much how you would like you know you and a kid would sort of like play in quote marks you know like it's it's it's, you know it's sort of intentionally silly but very adorable and funny and charming um i like when he dresses up as a grown-up um i think that's really fun where they're putting on his parents' clothes and he's got like the uh, he's got the suspenders on. That whole sequence I do find very, very entertaining, but it's just so hard to deny the very powerful combination of visuals and music that is the the flight, the flight sequence. There's a reason it's been parodied a hundred times. There's a very I, I famous example I'll talk about in a minute, um, from recent years. But the 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 flight over Brighton follow uh, heading up to like um it's just the, the lights Mars. on it, the effects. Mm-hmm. And it, I think it's because it's all been so home-based until that point that it just, like, opens up the world and visuals mm-hmm. on this enormous scale. Yes. 
yeah, hundred percent agree. And uh, I, I, it's so it's hard to deny. While I have a lot more fun, I think, with the home stuff, so it's easy for me to say oh, that stuff is a lot of fun. I just can't deny the artistry and the brilliance of the flight sequence. It's it's incredible. Everything about it is just it. It's it. It feels so magical. It really does. It's it's a really really brilliant. And this is coming from someone who has not got that level of affection for this. You know, I, it was not a staple of my Christmas times at home. I, I, I had a DVD copy of it eventually with Command of That Father Christmas, but I don't think... I, I, well, no, I say I had one. I think I bought it for Nadia. Um, so it's in our collection. But, like, this was not a big, huge part of my childhood, but I can absolutely understand why it was with everyone's because it is such a brilliantly put-together piece. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So what else were you going to say about the music specifically? Well, I just, I was, I want to praise it because the music, like when I think of the music in this, I always just think of, you know, the, 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 the walking on the air track that goes along with the flight scene. Cause it is such a, again, a, a perfect mesh of two things, you know, those visuals, that music is so good. But watching it this time, I just was really struck by how good the music is throughout, particularly yeah. the piece of music that goes with the dance scene with the other snowmen when they reach the party. Um, which, by the way, all those snowmen, I had this point with Nadia, they're all drinking booze. These snowmen are like a day old. That is not acceptable. They've got bottles of champagne Boozy and snowmen. all sorts. Sorry? Just, yeah, boozy snowmen. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, what's, what's going on with that? I mean, I know it's Christmas. You you know, you crack open a bottle of sherry or whatever if you're an old British family. But like, what? Like That seems... Anyway, that's a different different criticism, I suppose. But... um. That the even the but the music that goes under that dance sequence is just brilliant. It's just the music is great throughout. It's less iconic elsewhere because it's not got the lyrics, which are obviously a big part of uh, the walking air track and, the, and the, particularly those very um, those falsetto vocals, um, which are iconic in themselves. Um, uh, Peter Ante um, sang those in the, in the feature. Um, it's yeah, it's 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 just surprising i i just don't remember ever noticing the music before but watching it with an eye to having to record a podcast of reasonable length about it i was sort of drawn to this like to to, to, to point you know looking for stuff that i don't normally notice and and yeah that, that really it's, stuck out to me that the music design the, throughout is great the music becomes dialogue as well like the the symbols as 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 the snowman goes to sneeze the yes you know, the, when when they're trying to tiptoe there's a dun 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 like yes it's, yes. it's you know it's stuff that we've seen a lot but yes. again 1982 and it's just used so effectively here like yeah. it's it's beautifully used and i think you're right about the dance sequence that just has so much joy to it mm-hmm. um and has so much fun to it um and again it's it's matching even the joyous moments in the music when they're playing around at home. Like I also really like the sequence where, you know, he's wearing the dad's clothes and all of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of, that's got an energy to it, but then they ramp it up even more in the dance sequence. And mm. there's more energy than any other point. And yeah, it's just um, the music is expertly used. Definitely. And I, and I hadn't even thought about that, but the music in place of sound effects or dialogue is, is also a really yeah. good point. Something that hadn't even occurred to me, but yeah, absolutely a great observation. Because you could have you so could well. have easily put in a sneeze. Like j- the sneeze, you could have easily made it a sneeze, yeah. but they don't. And you don't really... You, I, it was the first time I'd ever noticed it watching it. I don't think you noticed that as a kid. Yeah, it's not just I don't think dialogue less. Watching it's, it's, it. it's almost soundless. Like... It's a, it's a silent yeah. film. It's a, there's no it sound is. contextually yeah. from the characters, the world. Yep. You don't hear doors opening and closing. There's no foley work. Nope. And 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 the the only time you could argue it's contextual is the is the song that plays when he goes to the party might be the song they're actually listening to contextually at the party. But it might not oh, be yeah. also. <laughs> <laughs> like you know but there is yeah. still no sound effects of that though you don't hear the footsteps of the snowman as they're dancing or whatever it's it's really interesting choice um and it works brilliantly here i think yeah it works it it creates so much atmosphere hmm. i would agree um yeah so i i mean it's a recommend why not i think everyone should dig this oh, out definitely so do do you have any so what do you feel of my do you think it's too long? Do you have any things that where you were watching it like, hmm, not sure about this element? Uh, no, I, I thought it was the perfect length for what it was. I, I think they spent just the right amount of time balancing the pacing with, with the setup of creating the snowman, the initial getting to know the snowman, l- investing me in their friendship 
as they walk around the house and get into japes and that's funny enough that you don't mind that you're also being sort of demonstrated the growth of their little relationship to the magic of the the, the the air sequence which leads to the dance sequence which basically leads to the really impactful ending it moves at a clip for me like it's it's i i, I didn't feel any pacing issues at all but i i could see maybe hmm, i i think the dance sequence maybe you could argue slightly too long and you could probably get away without affecting it too much trimming a bit of the japes in the house and having the similar effect but i definitely didn't feel an immediate need to expand on that ending because i think in this case what they were going for was that sudden shock um so I don't know what, because what else would you have done other than doing what you described earlier, which is a much more involved plot with dialogue and story. Just just have him, like, turn and get a hug from his mum or something. It's so sud. It's so, like, I was like, right. And I was like, surely the credits can't. Oh, no, they do. Like, And I laughed. I was like, fuck, I don't remember it being, I remember it being upsetting, but it feels brutal. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but I think that feels brutal because of the choice. I think if they had him hugging his mum or something, that takes away from that. And I think, I think that brutal ending is like, one of the best things about it i mean it's horrible to say but it's like it's a re- it's powerful any movie that or film or short film or whatever that can that can be be that powerful like t- you know thumbs yeah. up go for it like yeah it is savage and and the way they hold on the shot of him essentially lying over the lump that used to be his friend the snowman as the music plays and the credits roll it's like <laughs> it's it is it's like it's like a punch to the gut and i i, I remember I, I think i watched this like three or four years ago last no maybe longer no it probably would have been longer actually but i remember the very last time i watched it being adult enough to also go fuck that ending's brutal yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. whenever it was i last watched it i was old enough to go jesus they went for that didn't they you know in a way that i hadn't noticed necessarily as a kid um yeah it's savage it's really savage it's 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 you know it's definitely the movie not to show to kids who've recently lost a pet or a fucking grandparent or something jesus <laughs> so, you'd ruin a kid that way i think um yeah. but yeah so give me Give us the trip. I'm excited to hear the trip. Yeah, there isn't a huge amount because, of course, it's only a short and it's a and TV short. So, but there's, a, there's a... to Go clarify on. before you do as well. Obviously, I would absolutely recommend it too. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you'd be crazy not to. I think, right? Like, I, I can't imagine anybody coming away from this like hating it. I'd be strange. No. I, I could see somebody coming from away from it nonplussed, a bit like it, you know, eh, it's whatever, you know. But I, I, I could be really surprised to hear of anyone who outright hated this film. Um, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. So. Um, Obviously, a lot of people. There's a big mix-up with who sings the song here. Um, so it's actually a, a, a young boy called Peter Auntie who sings the song in the feature. But most people think it was a boy called Alad Jones who sings the song in the film. And what happened apparently was that they did the film 1982, and then there was an advert, a Christmas campaign for a British toy store that used snowman-esque visuals. What Toys R Us? I don't know. No, no, a specific. I think Toys R Us are international, aren't they? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it was like a small yeah, British yeah, toy store, like Tommy's Toys or something like that. You know, one of those old... I don't think they really exist anymore, but it doesn't specify here. It just says... Yeah, because it, just says, yeah, cause it, it probably wouldn't go, we're walking in the air. Toys R Us, Toys R Us, Toys R Us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure which which company for, but like... so, that, so the, But... The, basically they were re-recording the song and but they couldn't use the same kid because his voice had broke basically those high notes you can only hit at a certain age um so then they brought in ala jones who recorded a new version of it that was both released as a single mm-hmm. and was it was so it'd been re-recorded for an advertising campaign but then it was released as a single as well that this version got released three as a years single. after Yes, Alan Jones's version got released as a single, the version from the toy wow. ad. But most people yeah. then associated it with Alan Jones because it hit the charts with his name attached to it, and everyone just assumed it had been him that did it in the film, but it was not. Um, he never. Got that he didn't poor other it. bloke. <laughs> yeah, Peter Auntie, his name is, um, who didn't yeah. get anywhere near the same film. Like Alan Jones, to this day, releases albums. Like he's very popular in in the UK uh, as a, as a yeah. sort of opera singer. His, his career has taken a slight. A slight detail. It's a slight, yeah. Oh, is there some, was there some popular... recent stuff that I've missed? Uh, there was a scandal, I believe. Oh dear. Oh, I don't want to know about that. Um, 
Yeah, I think that I might. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, if if I'm wrong, I, let me just double check because I don't want to. BBC suspension. Yeah, in November 2017, Jones was being investigated by BBC following allegations of inappropriate behaviour. Uh, in the interim, he was asked to withdraw from programmes. It was sub- subsequently confirmed that the BBC had lifted the suspension and he would not... And Oh, and he would resume presenting programmes. So there were some allegations and then he got... Yeah, it got, you know, taken... Yeah, he, yeah. so I take that back. It's unfair to say... Yeah. There you go. He's still got his MBE. Yeah, he's still releasing albums. Released one with Russell Watson in 2018. Yeah. And another one. So... In Harmony with Russell Watson in 2018 and then back in Harmony in 2019 with Russell Watson. There you go. So like, yeah, so he's he's still like a huge name in this country and a, and a, and a, and a um, well, huge is an exaggeration, but like he's still a big name in this country that you can still sell a product with his name on it. Um, but I don't think he, Peter Arnty is getting quite the... Uh, the attention, <laughs> which is a shame because he did it first. Um, I don't think I know. It's to be fair, though, I don't think I really noticed too much difference between the two versions. No, which you is wouldn't pr- know. probably why. That's probably why you don't really like. It's why people make that mix up, basically. You know. Um, yeah. So there you go. Um, so yeah, but he—I mean, apparently, he, looking at it, I've just looked him up. He's still singing in various like companies and stuff across. So he's not—he's he's working. Um, oh, ma- maybe not as well known, but he's—he's—he's—he's—he's he's, he's, he's continuing to work out of it. So good for him. So yeah, there you go. That's a, that's a big, big, big mix-up. Um, let's have a look. So yeah, so I already mentioned. Obviously, the PBS version has David Bowie, and it's really funny because uh, so I watched it separately. I do—I dug it out because I really wanted to watch the Bowie one. So I watched the Bowie intro. Which I think is on one of the that is on the DVD version I had that I gave to Nadia, and it's basically David Bowie being like, "I remember that Christmas. I made a snowman." And he opens like a box in his attic, and it's the scarf that the kid gets at the end. Mm-hmm. So the implication being that kid grew up to be David it's, Bowie. So there you yeah, go. And then it just awesome. and then it just starts. Um, in the original Briggs cartoon book, the boy doesn't actually have a name. Um, but in this, when Santa Claus gives him a present, you can clearly see James on the tag, um, and it was named. Oh, okay. um, it was it was named after the um, husband of one of the animators. No, oh, nice. So that's where the name came from. Um, a sixteen millimeter version of this film that has an instrumental only soundtrack um, exists. Um, that I don't know what they did with that, um, but uh, the DVD version obviously has the full song with the lyrics. But there's a version out there without it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Um, so there were three different versions of the intro. We've kind of talked about these, but very quickly to recap: there's one where Raymond Briggs plays an adult James walking through the countryside, telling his story of the snowman. The second one is the Bowie one, and the uh, third one, Father Christmas, voiced by Mel Smith, who voiced him in the Father Christmas movie with a similar but not quite the same animation style is seen in his living room and he mentions that he was there and hosted the Christmas party that the snowman and James attends and then he sits in his chair and then put, turns on his TV and the snowman plays very confusing none of that I mean the most logical one sounds is probably the adult James one but yeah <laughs> yeah I mean yeah really weird um, the short film was parodied in a long running BBC sketch show um, I don't think that's no, that's no, that's not interesting. Griffey Jones was putting in it or something. I don't know. That doesn't look like an interesting piece of trivia at all. Um, well, you did start it though. I feel like you, you started. started so okay. You probably, well, okay. The short film was parodied in a long-running BBC sketch show, comedy show. This is really badly written as well. The short film was parodied in the long-running BBC sketch comedy show, Alas Smith and Jones, in 1984. Which in the sketch, the snowman and James are shot by a bird hunter, voiced by Riff, well played by Griff Reese Jones. Mel Smith provided the voice of Father Christmas. Oh, that's a separate piece of trivia that they've stuck on to the same one. Mel Smith provided the voice of Father Christmas in the 1991 adaptation of Raymond Briggs' other book, Father Christmas. There you go. And then I think the final go. piece of trivia there isn't much, is there? Um, was it is to do with the Iron Brew spoof? Should we talk about the Iron Brew spoof for a minute? Because I think that's the oh, best. Yeah, thing. vaguely remember this. Yeah. So Iron Brew is a popular drink, particularly from Scotland, 
Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's where it's made, but they love it in Scotland. It's a popular soft drink in the UK. Um, I love it. I, 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 it's an acquired taste in England, but it is beloved in Scotland. Um, it's it's a sort of you love it or hate it thing. In, in, in England, but in Scotland, it's like the bee's knees. They love that stuff. And I, I'm a big fan of that drink as well. But the, it's one of the funniest parodies. It's just so absurd. So it's a different boy, a Scottish boy, being doing the walking in the air scene, but it's through Scottish landmarks, you know, like Edinburgh, Glasgow. And he's singing, uh, we're walking in the air, I'm sipping on my iron brew. My chilly sl- snowman mate says he would like some too. And he's like, I told him to get his own. He looks like he is going to cry. <laughs> I tell him once again, the iron brew is mine. And then the snowman lets him go. He starts falling through the air to his death. And then it's now I'm falling through the air. I wonder where I'm going to land. He nicked my iron brew and let go of my hand. It's it's so good. It's so good. It's parody at its best. Honestly, that it's genius. It's it's like it's perfect. And the visuals are, are, are really close to the original for a start which is quite hard to achieve probably closer than the fucking sequel if memory serves but um it's just so funny it's so funny it's really good dig that out as well if you can it's great cool well there we go then a a short one but it's still nearly double the length of the of the film so (laughs) not bad going no it would be 50 minutes if we were double the length of the film we got we got 10 minutes to go if you want to do that chris well, I don't, I'm not necessarily pushing for it, but it, it doesn't seem too unlikely. Um. It seems possible. We've done it before. Um, so the question, I suppose, now is what next? So it's it's Christmas, obviously. Oh, Merry Christmas, yes. everyone. It's the, what are we, the, like the 17th? Yeah. 17th of December. Hope you're all having a good Christmas or, or build up to Christmas. Hope you've all got your presents and that you haven't been fleeced with the, uh, stores hiking up their prices in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the build up. I hope you've found some good deals because it's not expensive to to business, isn't it, to... Christmas? I do think as well, though, because we've not made that point. If it's Christmas and you haven't watched it in ages, watch The Snowman. It's very Christmassy. It makes you feel very warm and Christmassy. W- watch it. Yeah, I think so. Um, and uh, for American listeners who who want, would rather we did the uh, the Rankin Bass Christmas, uh, like the reindeer, you know, the Rudolph Rudolph's reindeer one, or um, the Charlie Brown Christmas special, complain about it, and maybe we'll do that next year. There you go. Because <laughs> I'm def- I'm definitely not choosing that as the next one. Um, so yeah, so but that, but yeah, I think I hope everyone's having a, having a good old Christmas time. We'll, we'll we'll probably say the same thing on the next one because the next one is coming out. I think on like the twenty fourth. I think the next episode releases Christmas Eve. So um, nice, yeah. There you go, something to listen to on Christmas Eve. No one will listen to it. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> didn't we release something last year around the same time because of Steven Universe? I feel like we did. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. So the next one. Do you want to know what we're watching, Chris? Well, there were episodes airing around Christmas time last year for Steven Universe. Yeah, there were. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, uh, yes, I'd love to know. So I've already pretty much hinted. Like we've, it's come up multiple times on this podcast already. It's time, Chris, to finally watch Gremlins. Um, one of my favorite childhood movies. Uh, one of the only movies to ever give me genuine nightmares. We'll talk about those next week. Um, but also a Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. But. Like also partially a horror movie, um, I would say more than partially. I'd say it's a it's a cross between a Christmas movie and a horror movie, and it's uh, it's it's Gremlins is fascinating to discuss. The sequel more so for different reasons. The sequel is one of the strangest choices ever made for a film. Like the sequel is just the first one on fucking acid. It's insane. Forgetting that for a second, though, it is a it's a classic. It's a it's a really great movie. Um, I got to watch it a couple of years ago on the original forty mil um, print, oh, and nice. then I got to meet um, Zach Galligan, who plays Billy Peltzer in this movie, and he uh, he signed my toy Mogwai. Um, on the ear. I'll, maybe I'll put a picture of it on screen if you're watching this on YouTube. If I remember, I don't always remember. Sorry if it's not there. But um, yeah, I met him and he was lovely. And uh, and, well, he, and he signed it. So I, I, I have a the fact I mean, the fact that I went to that screening at all tells you how much affection I have for this movie, and probably how many times I've seen this movie. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to show it to you, Chris. Who I believe have you've not seen it. Is that, that's never correct. seen it. Never seen it. Nope. Do you have any context? Any any images in mind? Anything stick out like any like at all before you go into it? Little little monster thing, I think. Little monster thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. 
I think I can picture a gremlin. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Great. Don't Google them before you watch the movie because I think the, the the movie, unsurprisingly, a little bit like Robocop, plays with expectations in terms of the visuals. Like, it, you know, it kind of teases a little bit before it shows. So, okay. Don't cool. try not to Google it before you watch it. Um, but yeah. Um, we'll do. Yeah. But yeah, so that's come back next week to hear us discuss Gremlins. Does it hold up? I'm, well, I mean, I think it does because obviously I watched it a couple of years ago and I'm still talking about how much I love the movie. But will Chris agree? Does it work for somebody who has no nostalgia for it? And more importantly, does it work as a Christmas movie? Because I feel a little bit like it's one of those ones that people sometimes debate whether it legitimately counts as a Christmas movie or not. And I think it'll be interesting to get your opinion on that. I mean, I think it could not be more of a Christmas movie, but I think a lot of people have an opinion that a Christmas movie needs to feel Christmassy and warm and positive, you know, like the season itself. But I don't think that's necessarily the requirement for it to be a Christmas movie. But that's just me. Okay. Right. Well, I'm excited to find out. So there you go. Join us next time for that. I'm Chris Billingham. I'm Dan Billingham. And this review has been rewound.